particular race. She lags the field. She is last. She's about nine lengths or so from the front front pace setter. Now, she can do that. Where she is front to back will depend on the pace. In the ladies' classic, she was able to circle the field. She was good enough to go seven wide, eight wide in this particular case and still overpower her competition. But that was the females. That was in the ladies' classic. Today, she's running against the males. Can she be this far away from the rail? Lose this many links? Nine paths? I think not. I don't really think she's going to be on the rail, saving all the ground, because there's going to be a lot of traffic. But maybe splitting the difference, being three, four, five links off the rail, will get the job done today. It's hard for me to believe that she can circle them and beat the males. And the man who will be up on board with that task, of course, is Mike Smith. the race unfortunately I was hoping they'd show the race unfortunately they didn't show the race on that one but um fun performance so yeah now, this is the the um queen of racing you know, so. I'll tell you what, I'll show you the video. That's what I'll do now. I'll show you the video. Um, I, have no, I have another video in the machine at the moment. This is the right DVD for this now because I have two DVD players in it. Bonus features as well on this, so the bonus features may feature the um, races. They may feature the races, so I'm going to show you the movie first. It's a documentary, and it's called um, Zenyasha Queen of Racing. <coughs> I hope you enjoyed this one. It's actually quite good. does it take for a champion racehorse to be captured in bronze forever? Is it the number of races they win? The historical significance of those races? The depth and the quality of the competition? Is such greatness measured by the prize money earned? By the many accolades from an admiring industry? The adoration of the doting public? What if a horse embodies all of these, the money, the record, the fame, 
with a career that comes as close to perfection as possible. It sounds unlikely, even unbelievable. Yet, there was such a racehorse. And this is her story. This is the story of Zenyatta. In ancient Greek mythology, it is said that Poseidon, the god of the oceans, created the horse from a great cresting wave and bequeathed him to mankind as a gift. Watching a horse in action, such a legend is easy to believe. Like the ocean, they are deep in character, rich in emotion, and you never know what kind of treasure might wash up on shore. The filly who became known as Zenyatta made her first public appearance in September of 2005 in the sales ring at Keeneland. Not many were impressed. By street cry at a Burton No by Chris S. She was gangly and had a big rash on her neck, but she she was just beautiful. She put her head on my shoulder. I was like, shh, I don't have you yet, you know. You have to be, it's an auction, so you can't look like you're, you're looking at who you're looking at. Here's on now, on the music, being the music, on the music, and in the back with the 60,000. We got her, like nobody else, you know, was looking at her. It was really fabulous. With her purchase, on the recommendation of Bloodstock advisor David Ingordo, the young Zenyatta found herself in tall company. It was Dottie and Gordo Sheriffs, the racing manager for Jerry and Ann Moss for nearly 30 years, who received exciting news coming from Florida. She just grew and emerged into the person, or sorry, <laughs> into the horse she became. To us, she's a person, I have to say. Early on, when she was at the training center at Jeannie Mayberry and April Mayberry's training center, my son had called me, it was right before Christmas time, and he said, Mom, he said, she's going around this track twice to everybody else's once, and she's in gallop mode. David called and said, you know, I make sure she gets a really good name. So, she did. For more than a quarter of a century, the thoroughbreds of Anne and Jerry Moss had been making their mark. Jerry Moss was making beautiful music long before his horses became famous. In the 1960s, the young man from the Bronx teamed with partner Herb Alpert to create A&M Records. They struck it rich with a motherload of creative talent as A&M became the gold standard among independent recording labels. Obviously, we got to know the musicians involved and the people involved and uh, Giacomo and other horses that came from police titles, sting titles. I immediately thought of Zenyatta because there was a very big uh, police album called Zenyatta Mandata. And, uh, and so she became Zenyatta. Everybody liked the name. And, uh, I was really happy with it. She came from Florida. 
her as a two-year-old, you know, and we were constantly aware of her because she was such a big, beautiful thing. Keeping it in the family, when it came to training Zenyatta, John Sheriffs, the husband of Dottie and Gordo, was the man for the job. The native New Yorker was a Vietnam veteran who had worked his way up from the bottom. You know, she came with a bit of a reputation. We had a feeling that she was going to be, you know, something better than average. He had a proven record of top class stakes winners. He was an unorthodox horse whisperer who gave Anne and Jerry Moss their Kentucky Derby with Giacomo. I'm a horse whisperer too. After that, hmm. what more could they ask? And John really gets it, you know, John is, is just that good. She forced me to be very disciplined. I said, Steve, we're gonna attack, walk around the shed a couple of times before we go out. All right, you guys ready? She threw a fit, ran backwards sideways, so I, I decided at that moment that I couldn't really train Zenyatta. <laughs> it was better for me to learn how to get along with Zenyatta rather than try to train Zenyatta. He said, I'm working on her. I'm, I'm getting it right. Don't worry. <laughs> As a three-year-old, she, she wasn't ready to race. You know, it, it took her a long time to mature into, into the horse she is now, and uh, we just had to be patient with her. Zinny, what are you doing? Ready to go, gal? She was full of herself. Wanted to play. She liked to play and buck, and she got loose a couple times with some other riders and ran around the racetrack, you know. She's always full of herself. Zenyatta was revealed to the racing world. You know, I didn't have a lot of expectation, you know. I just thought she'd run a good race because she'd trained well and, and she'd been working well in the morning, but, you know, they always have to take it up one notch in the afternoon. She ran for the first time uh, as, a, as a late developing three-year-old, what could be more appropriate, uh, Thanksgiving weekend at Hollywood Park. She ran her maiden and we had the whole family out there. And they got to see her and get a picture taken with her. There is Zenyatta, first time started with a little bit of buzz. Uh, obviously, she wears the colors of 2005 Kentucky Derby winner, Giacomo. That's right, Ken. I'm here with Jerry Moss. He owns the nine-horse Zenyatta today. She looks beautiful out here in the paddock. She's a daughter of Street Cry, half-sister to Balance. What are you expecting today? Uh, we just hope for a good run, you know. Um, it's a first start, as you know, and uh, she's been training really well, and John's been very careful with her because we, we all love her so much. and. Uh, we just hoping she uh, she makes a good try and, and does well. Good luck today, Zenyatta, making our first start for owner Thanks. Jerry Moss. They're off. French Forest and Elo Gold break best. Elusive Melody and Rupert's Promise. Felicity's at the rail. Carmel Coffee and Intensify are next. Then My 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 Delilah and Morgan Lane. South African Baby and Mirror Pond are next. And the trailer is Zenyatta. Zenyatta and My 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 Delilah have nine to come, and now Morgan Lane is at the back of the pack and had to check, and French Forest takes over the lead at the top of the stretch. It is French Forest in front. Carmel Coffee comes with a run outside of Felicity, who's now back in third. Intensify and Rupert's Promise. Then comes Elusive Melody, and Zenyatta is closing nicely in the middle of the track. Carmel Coffee has the lead, but you better take a look at Zenyatta to run by and do it nicely. Carmel Coffee left in second. Zenyatta. Zenyatta won by three and a half and a good looking win. I don't know which was more enjoyable, watching Zenyatta make the move in the stretch or watching the smile from ear to ear on the face of John Sheriffs when he saw yeah. the three-year-old filly in the clear and mowing him down. This was pretty awesome. And she is uh, a filly with a very serious future. I don't think we really realized uh, how good she was going to be until after her first race. They're up. Zenyatta's first race was so impressive that her second had to be a letdown. At least that was the conventional wisdom. Because a maiden win can be deceiving, it's usually best not to get too excited too soon. 
Try telling that to Hollywood Park announcer Vic Stauffer. He had the Philly pegged for greatness half a mile from home. Zenyatta will be four wide leaving the backstretch. If she wins, she's a half an hour of the best. Zenyatta is last and wide leaving the backside. Quite a storm cat is the leader. Oak Hill girl. Now Zenyatta unleashes a run. And here comes Zenyatta, three deep. Caressive goes with her. Now they're second and third behind Quite a storm cat. Down is four from the front and they run to the top of the stretch. Quite a storm cat is the leader. Zenyatta runs up outside of her and draws within a length of the lead. Down is third. Caressive didn't go on and Zenyatta is making a mockery of this field. Zenyatta, David Flores has not asked her to run a step and she's three in front. Quite a storm cat and down. Here's a future superstar, Zenyatta. Wow. Zenyatta just crushed them by four, was four wide and left at the gate. Holy mackerel. David Flores rode Zenyatta in her first three races, and I probably should rename the Ice Fan or something like that because he just sits as quiet as he possibly can on a horse. He's just patient. He's just a perfect rider. He doesn't move. He's patient, and he waits for that horse to come up underneath him and get going. David Flores, I think, really gave her the confidence that she wasn't going to be pushed early, and she got her legs underneath her and, and get going late. The life of a talented racehorse is fraught with challenges. Zenyatta's was no different. In January of 2008, she turned officially four, an age more befitting her size, and it was time to try graded stakes competition against fillies of far greater experience. On top of that, she was leaving the comfort of her Hollywood Park home for the first time to run at Santa Anita. But if any of that mattered, she hit it well. Now, away they go. Zenyatta, a little slow to get going. Dawn after dawn broke away well. Tough tis as sis is right there. Free Caroline on the outside. No early speed at all. They're just cantering in the first furlong. Romance is Diane is in there, then indescribable. Zenyatta is last, but only four lengths off the lead. Joy starts is last. Zenyatta is last in the very front, front now. Zenyatta like is on the outside. Wings still is still five same, more for the very last and it should up. So they, they come to the 5 16 and it's still dawn after dawn. Well, the lead is tough to the Joy starts is last. Joy starts is last. Once we established our routine and found out how she wanted to be trained and what she was able to give us, you know, and that's what we stuck with. How do you feel about Zenyatta's win on Saturday? Uh, I feel great. This is Mario Zenyatta's groom. And what are you doing right now, cleaning her stall? Yeah. <laughs> There's a champion's drink for a nice little bit of Guinness. Guinness, Guinness after, her win. Guinness. after the Ellen Sino, it was time to take the Zenyatta show on the road. Sheriffs and the Mosses descended upon the 2008 Oaklawn Park meet in force, with both Zenyatta and Tiago leading the way. By then, the Colt was a well seasoned traveler, but Zenyatta was getting her first taste of cross country travel. And awaiting her in Arkansas was the formidable Ginger Punch, champion older female of 2007. Adding intrigue to the mix was a new rider, just when Zenyatta and David Flores were becoming an item. But Flores had to stay home to fulfill a riding commitment, so the Mosses turned to the man who rode Giacomo in the Kentucky Derby, Mike Smith. Smith was elected to the Hall of Fame in 2003, the year after he rode the Philly Azari to Horse of the Year Heights. One of the greats of all time, this is Azari! I really didn't know what to think of Mike Smith because I just knew his reputation. When I got to know him, it, you know, it was later in his career, he already, he already won all these races and Breeders' Cups and everything like that. But I found out that Mike Smith is, is a real horseman. You know, he's not only a jockey, but he's a horseman, and he, and he really, he really bonds with the horse. 
It was always uh, a great experience for Mike to ride one of my horses. When Smith climbed aboard Zenyatta for the apple blossom, he wasn't sure what he was in for. Then he found out. For the next three seasons, it was the ride of his life. And they're off in the apple blossom. Clever strike and brownie points both broke sharply, but there goes the champion Ginger Punch running right to the lead with Ramon Dominguez. Up between horses goes Lemon Drop Bomb, then a gap of about five to Zenyatta and Kettle went up. They move on to the first turn of the Apple Blossom handicap with the champion Ginger Punch showing away, but Lemon Drop Bomb wants to keep her company now on the outside. Still another six lengths back to Zenyatta. And Kettle one up. They have not begun their late runs as they move on to the final turn. Ginger Punch continues to lead Lemon Drop Bomb. She opens the lead to three quarters. Now here comes Brownie Points moving up on the outside after three quarters. One, eleven, and three. Here they come into the stretch of the Apple Blossom Handicap. Ginger Punch and Lemon Drop Bomb just heads apart now. As Brownie Points moves up. And here comes Zenyatta under a full head of steam on the extreme outside. Four of them across the track, and it is Zenyatta to the outside with Brownie Points. Ginger Punch can't keep up. It's Zenyatta and Brownie Points as they drive the ladder. But Zenyatta, under Mike Smith, is going to pull away. And Zenyatta goes to four in a row with a flawless performance, winning the Apple Blossom by four. When we took it to the Apple Blossom, and it was, it was our first time traveling anywhere, and uh, so we really, you know, we had hopes, but we didn't, they really didn't know what to expect. And uh, she just ran so well over in El Clown. I see me with you from all the things you do. You turn around and around in my mind. It's just great. I mean, when people saw her, they just couldn't believe it. Is this the Russian black from California? Is that the Philly that's never been beat? I mean, they, they were stunned when they saw her, as most people are. Just to watch her take off like that. Beat Ginger Punch, who was champion at that time. That performance that afternoon really separated us. We're together tonight. The Alba Blossom lit a fire under the Zenyatta story that began to rage far and wide. Even though her next four starts were all in California, each one added a new layer to the growing legend. The questions went from, can she win another, to, how did she do that, again? And the undefeated Zenyatta is at the back of the pack. She's got six lengths to make up, now five, now four, and here comes Zenyatta and Mike Smith to circle up on the outside. Romance is Diane, Santa Teresita, and a three-wide Zenyatta. Romance is Diane has lost the lead. Santa Teresita has it, but for how long? Here comes Zenyatta. She has circled up past the field and runs to the final furlong. 